All right, you may remember that yesterday I started you out with this, x squared minus 4, and I said something like, so you can factor that, right? x plus 2, x minus 2. Does that ring a bell? Remember that? Okay, and so we talked about how then you could have problems like this, sine squared theta minus 1, and you could factor that puppy into sine theta plus 1 and sine theta minus 1. Are you with me? Do you remember this? Okay, so if you can factor things like that, why would you factor them? Because sometimes you want to solve them. Let's go back to this. If I had to solve this, I'd say the answer was x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. If I had to solve this, I'd set it equal to 0. And then I'd say, what does this have to be to make this part of the equation equal 0 if that was negative 1? right? That all of a sudden looks like a trig problem. Sine theta equals negative 1. Figure out what theta is. Remember those? Because then you go like over 1, and then you go, okay, what, what quadrant am I in where sine is negative? Hmm. All students take calc. Sine's negative. Well, sine's positive here and here, so it must be down there, so I must have two answers. One for here, and one for here. Like that. Okay, that's what you're doing today. She actually solving it. So you don't just factor the thing. Once you factor the thing, you get it down to a statement like this. And once you get it down to a statement like that, you actually figure out how many degrees would make it work. Okay, so those are typical problems for today. So let's talk about this. Uh, when do you sense a quadratic is nearby? Sounds like the beginning of a very nerdy joke. When do you... When can you tell if there's a quadratic nearby? I really wish I had a great punchline for that, but I don't. You just have to look for something that's squared, something that's not squared, and a number. Something that's squared, something that's not squared, and then a number. It's kind of like uh, something borrowed, something blue. Uh, let's see, what else is there? When the bride is supposed to bring up something old, something new. That's it. So. Maybe in Venezuela it's something used <laughs> in, in the United States. He said it. I'm just saying. In the United States, it's something old, something new, something borrow, something blue. Okay? So yeah, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Here it's uh, something squared, something not squared, and then a number. If you ever see that, then you know you've got a quadratic nearby. Okay. So if you've got sine squared plus regular sine, and then a number, then you've really got a quadratic. See, there's something squared, something not squared, and a number. And that's going to be a quadratic. So then, I can solve it like a normal quadratic. In fact, I would change it over, and I would say, you know, this is going to be too hard to write all these signs over and over again. So I'm going to swap out. Every time I see a, rig a sign, I'm just going to say x. So this one's x squared plus 2x's plus 1 equals 0. And then all of a sudden that looks like a normal problem I can factor. This will be easy. We aren't going to make them brutally hard to factor. The hard part is that they start out as trig problems. You have to realize they're actually quadratics. Then you have to solve the quadratic. Again, we're not going to make them brutal to factor. This one's x plus 1 and x plus 1. And then the answer, x equals negative 1. And it's the same over there, so no point in doing it twice. But since I did a swap at the beginning and made my life easier by changing the sine x to just a plain old x, i got to now make the problem harder again and say x wasn't really x, it was sine x. So there's how I all of a sudden have sine x is equal to negative 1. Got to put that over 1. Got to think to myself, where do I have an opposite and hypotenuse that would be the exact same as each other. That's not a normal triangle. I have to be at one of these spots. And then i got to figure out where is sine negative. Sine's positive here. So it can't be there. It can't be there. Where is sine negative? It's down in one of those spots. It can't do a triangle, though, so it must be either here or here or here. And sine is negative 1 where sine is y over r. And y has to be negative 1, and it has to be right there. And what's that? 3 pi over 2, very good. Only if you were doing an inverse problem, it's not an inverse problem. If it was an inverse problem, you'd be right. You'd say negative pi over 2. But it's not an inverse problem, and therefore you can't use the negatives like that. You have to say positive.
answers. And you know how you'd know that for absolute positive? The directions would say, only give answers that are between 0 and 2 pi. So you can't use negatives is what they're trying to say. Okay. So, your problems typically look like that. Let's do a few. I have some on a worksheet right here. Yes, we're getting into the worksheet. Wait, wait, one more thing. Before I get into the worksheet, there's one more concept that's really important, and it's finding common denominators. Get your notes out, and I'm going to do a couple problems with common denominators with you. you got to see how this is important. problem I've written down there. I know the thing on the right hand side would just equal one. All right. And if the thing on the right hand side just equals one, do you get then I have tangent squared plus one? And don't you have some sort of a thing that you've memorized? Something about a one and a tan? What's the deal with that? One that the tan is the, don't say one that we seek because then you're going to put a one with it, but it's just one with tan is what we seek. So secant squared is the answer to this book. Done. But I'm going to try to show you how it's handy to know how to find common denominators. So just as an example, I'd like you to rewrite this as sine squared over cosine squared. Would you rewrite tangent as sine squared over cosine squared? Then you'll see, oh, we've got common denominators. A couple of people are not doing this right now. One of them is wearing an argyle okay, paper. Try this problem with us right now. But there are going to be examples, many. In fact, last night's homework, there were several, but I want you to do this one. You see, I'm going to walk you up to the hard ones. The hard ones are hard. i got to make sure you can get it on the easy ones first. Okay, so this one becomes sine squared over cosine squared plus this cosine over cosine which is kind of ludicrous because it seems like it should just cancel, but I think you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. All right. Now, do you get that they have a common denominator? And therefore, I can add them. When you add them, the tops get actually added and the bottoms don't get added. It's not like a ripoff. It is the way it normally works. If I have two-fifths plus one-fifth that I add them, I get three-fifths. Notice that the bottom just stays the same. The bottom doesn't get added. Just the top gets added. Get that? Okay, so if I add the tops, do you get how I have sine squared plus cosine squared on the top? Sine squared plus cosine squared. What is sine squared plus cosine squared? I recognize that one. It's equal to one. All over cosine squared. And what is one over cosine? Seek it. Now, wouldn't it have been easier to just take at the beginning and say that cancels and makes it equal to 1? Yes, but it won't be that simple on the test. I'm trying to show you how you got to learn how to add big fractions. This, if as the problem I started with was red there, do you get on the right-hand side, I could have just made that a 1 right off the bat, and then I had a tangent squared plus 1, and the 1 with the tangent is what we seek, so it could have been secant squared right off the bat. But I did this long way of doing it to show you that common denominators can be handy sometimes. We found a common denominator. Here and here, they're the same. So now I can add them. And I get this, and this part right here turns into a 1. 1 over cosine is equal to secant. Okay, any questions about that? All right, see if you can do this common denominator one then. It's telling you, you're going to have to know common denominators in the test. I guarantee you, you're going to have issues with that on the test. You have to be able to handle the situation. So let's say we had 1 over cosine plus uh, tangent and go ahead add those together see what you get the 
hard way is to go like this. It's like tangent is over one, and then I gotta multiply both sides by cosine. The easy way to do it is to just say tangent is the same as sine over cosine. And right away, you've got common denominators. Now I can just add the top, one plus sine, all over cosine. That's the answer. I know, because it feels like it should be more, but the, that was it. That's all you had to do. I just asked you to add them together. There is nothing more to do. All right. So now, let's do one where they're not going to be such nice denominators. Do those have a common denominator right now? So make it so they do. I'll give you a hint. Anytime you need to get the one of the denominators to be build it up to be like the other one, I have to take the, the simpler denominator and like do something to it. You always multiply by the same thing over the same thing. That way you're really multiplying by one. So I'm gonna multiply this by cosine and cosine. That way this will become a cosine squared, just like this one. And then I'll have a common denominator. Final answer cosine plus two over cosine squared. That's it. I didn't expect you to go any farther than that this time. You get that. Are you thinking you could cancel this? Can't do that. Because there's an add in there. That same example like this. If I had 5 plus 1 over 5, I could not cancel this. Wouldn't work. Because there's a plus. If it was 5 times 6 over 5, then I could cancel it. Okay, but so I cannot cancel this. Okay, now let's look at some on the worksheet that were like this. Everybody look at, uh, on last night's homework, um, let's look at H's in hamburger, would you read the H? Okay. Go ahead. All right. Do these have a common denominator right now? No. So I should make it so they do have a common denominator. Then I could actually subtract them. All right. But before I do that, it'd probably be smart to make everything in the sines and cosines. That's a really powerful tool. Like if you're gonna have top five things you gotta know for this test, that'd be one of them. Make everything into sines and cosines when you can. So what's secant turn into if you're gonna use sines and cosines? One over cosine. All over sine. Minus, and those are already sines and cosines. Now, again, I could change it to a tangent, but that's kind of missing the point. You wanna change everything into sines and cosines. So then, now I gotta deal with a fraction and a fraction. That's also gonna come up. Got to know how to handle fractions and fractions. So I go 1 over cosine times, flip this one, and reverse it to 1 over sine. Okay. So now I have 1 over cosine x sine x minus sine x over cosine x. Do you get that they do not have a common denominator right now? But they will, as soon as I fix it, take the smaller, simpler denominator and multiply it up to be like what you need it to be. So I go over to this one, and I multiply it by something over something, which is equal to 1. So what do you think? Sine over sine. Very good. Now it's got a common denominator. Now I can actually subtract them. The tops actually get subtracted with 1 minus sine. Hold on. I'm not done yet. Sine squared x all over 
cosine x, sine x. Now, another thing that you got to know for the test on Thursday or whenever it is next week, next week's test, is you got to be able to pull this one out and say, what fact do I know about the squared ones? Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. I should have max in there. And that means that if I move this sign to the other side, cosine squared is really 1 minus sine squared. All right. So on the other hand, I was trying to find 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. There we go. So I can put a cosine right there. So I can put cosine right there. So now i got a cosine squared. over cosine x times sine x. Some canceling, cancel, cancel, and I get cosine over sine, which is cotangent. All right, it's almost lunchtime. All I want to do before that is to make sure you get how complicated this was. We started off with this, and what's the very first thing I told you that you should know about this kind of problem? Change everything to sines and cosines. And then I did that. And then I couldn't add them to, oh wait, first, before I couldn't add them together, I had to deal with a fraction and a fraction. Do you get how to do that? You flip and multiply. After that, I came to this part. And at this point, they didn't have common denominators, so I did this green thing here. What does that do? It gives me a common denominator. Once I have a common denominator, then the tops actually get added or subtracted in this case, and the bottom just stays the same. Then I had to know this off my list of identities it was really cosine squared. Then I had to know how to cancel stuff. I had to know how to cancel stuff. That if there's two on the top and one on the bottom, I can have just one left on the top. And then I had to know another identity. The cosine over sine is really cotangent. So there's kind of like almost everything you have to know in one problem, except it just represents different things, like you have to know all the identities so you can do this one at the end. You have to know all the identities so you could pull this one out. You have to know how to handle common denominators so you could do this part. You had to know how to handle fractions and fractions for that part. And, but wait, there's more. You have to be able to handle quadratics. We just talked about that a second ago. So when you see something like this, 5 sine uh, squared x plus 3 sine x plus 1 equals 0, you got to go, oh, wait a minute. Smells like a quadratic. Squared, not squared, plain number. Got to be able to factor that thing. All right, we'll practice that more after lunch. All right, we're back from lunch. And uh, when we last left, we had gone through this really hard problem from beginning to the end. And I am going to remind you, you need to know how to handle fractions and fractions. You need to handle common denominators. You need to be able to recognize things like 1 minus sine squared x as one of those identities. You need to be able to uh, cancel things. A lot of canceling going on. So, and then the new thing that you're, you've got to be good at now is you've got to recognize when something's a quadratic. All right, so here's a quadratic. It's got something squared, and it's got something not squared, and it's got a number, like 4. All right? Try factoring that one. In your notes, try factoring this. There's the hard way and the easy way. And let me tell you, if the policeman ever asks you which way you want to go down to the station, I always choose the easy way. <laughs> the cops, if you decide to resist arrest, they can do whatever necessary to take you down. And I think some of them have a lot of fun doing it. So, uh, there's, well, yeah, I've heard that question uh, many times, not myself, but, uh, you know, uh, to be honest, their job is to get you down there without causing the violence, but if you're basically, if you're, if you're going to be, you, you know, you're going to be tough, 
I saw some YouTube clips of this too. Cops are getting videotaped more and more. Uh, and so cops are fighting back by videotaping because so often the person later was probably drunk out of their mind. will claim that the cop was beating on me and I wasn't doing anything, you know, and then the cop wants to be able to play the video back. Like, this is what you were doing to me. You were trying to take my head off. So yeah, I took you down. So anyway, cops now, uh, the latest thing is, besides the tasers, that's obviously new technology. Yeah, it's sunglasses with the little video built into the sunglasses. So they're recording all the time. So uh, it, 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 they don't have to be like bright sun, but in the dark, it wouldn't work. So. And of course, the dash cams have been around long enough to give us many good episodes of cops. Uh, so anyway. It's sort of like dash cam, except it's with the cop. So when he has to run down the alley after you, he's still got the camera going. All right. So the hard way or the easy way? Here's the easy way. The easy way is change this to an x squared plus 5x plus 4. That's easy. Because now I know it, I can just solve this like a regular quadratic. And x plus 4, x plus 1. And then I'd have two answers. x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 1. All right. Now, I've made this little, little sacrifice to make it easier. I just said sine x was like x. Now I have to pay for that by going back and putting it back to sine x again. Yeah, sine of x, sine of x. So now I got my two little mini problems I got to solve. I have to solve sine of x has to equal negative 4, and I'm going to put that over 1. And I think you'll realize quickly that, wait a minute, the opposite over the hypotenuse can't be like that. The hypotenuse can't be the small side. Done. That, can't, that part can't be done. The other part is 1 over 1, and that should remind you, oh, that's one of those spots on the quadrantal. And where is sine equal to negative 1? If it's got to be here, or here, or here, or here, then you know it must be one of these y over r things, and they all have a radius of 1. So where is y negative 1? Down there. And so then the answer would not be negative. That's if you were using inverses. They instead, the answer would need to go around this way, and it would be 3 pi over 2 would be your final answer. Anybody actually get all the way to the end there? Get the answer? Nice work. That was tough. <laughs> this is horrible. All right. Yes. Oh, on the homework last night, you didn't have to go all this way. Last night, you just had to factor it. So you'd have had to say this, sine x plus 4 and sine x plus 1. And that would have been it last night. You just had to factor it. Now you have to go the extra mile and actually take these and get the answer answer for them and, like, draw the little picture for it and all that. So a final answer on this one was x would have to be 3 pi over 2. All right, so what does that mean for you and this worksheet? Well, this worksheet's a little bit big. In fact, it's too big to be, to be realistic. I feel like there's this, uh, I, have to be, I have to be realistic. With, I, I can't assign things that are just too big or you just can't be expected to do them. I every now and then will see my kids come home with, like, yeah, my, my math teacher, I don't know, we're decided to give us this, like, 83 math problems. So my kid will be slaving for, like, three hours trying to get this done. And uh, this is not right. So this one's a little big, so I'm cutting it down to just the front page by tomorrow. Just the front side. And do you have to know everything by the time we take the test? Yes, but you don't have to all know it all by tomorrow. So get the front side of this worksheet done. by tomorrow. So let's start the first one together. You creeping on my voice, John? All right. Here we go. Number one, A, as in aardvark. Six, sine theta. Some of you are yapping and need to stop. 6 sine theta minus 1 is equal to 2. Now, they were giving hints about how it sort of looks like another equation. I'd rather just, just solve it. We just got to get this part alone, sort of like that's an x, and we got to get it alone. So first thing is add 1 to both sides. And then I get 6 sine theta equals 1 plus 2 is 3. Now, I got to get this, this alone. Keep on telling yourself where you're headed. Trying to get that alone, so then it's going to be sine theta equals 3 over 6. Ever heard of 3 over 6 before? It's one half. 
Ever seen that one before? It's 30, which is also known as five or six. Good. But if you stopped right there, you'd get one wrong on the test because look in the directions. It says find all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, and that's kind of a hint that the answers are between 0 and 2 pi, that there's usually two of them. Is there another spot where sine is positive? Sine is positive here. We're sine opposite, hypotenuse, square root of 3. This is what the triangle looks like, and yeah, that's 30 degrees, also known as pi over 6. But isn't there another spot where sine is positive? Yeah, over here. And the opposite is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2, and this is square root of 3, but it's negative. But sine doesn't use that, so it really doesn't matter. Sine uses opposite hypotenuse. So there's another spot. And it's this, which is 5 pi over 6. Very good. It's This last little piece is a 1 pi over 6. And it's, of course, if you got all the way to here, it'd be 6 pi over 6. So it's 5 pi over 6. So you got one of the answers for this is pi over 6. And the other answer is 5 pi over 6. Five or six? Five, five or six. All right. This is tough stuff, but it's certainly not impossible stuff. Look at B as in banana. All you have to do is divide both sides by two, and you got a really simple problem. Okay? Look at C. This is happy day. This is uh, C as in cranberry. Uh, we're going to have an absolute value. Just a reminder, let's say this was the absolute value problem. You'd have... Split it into two things, x equals 3, x equals negative 3. Remember how absolute values like that work? You split them into two. So we need to do that for this. Cosine theta equals a half. This is problem 3, I believe. C is in front of it. C and 3 are kind of synonymous. Um, and I'm going to split this, because it's an absolute value, into two equations. Cosine of theta equals 1 half. And cosine of theta equals negative a half. It's been a while since you've done absolute values, so I thought it would be okay to remind you of that. Uh, number four is your first one that's a quadratic. Notice it's that one, it probably would be nice if you could factor it. Once you got it factored, it won't be that bad. E also is a quadratic. See, it's got something squared, something not squared, something borrowed, something blue. Letter F is also a quadratic. Again, it's got something squared, something not squared. G, another quadratic. And then all of a sudden, you get to H. What's special about H, different than all the other ones? It doesn't have the same function, so you can't do the quadratic thing unless it's got all the same function. Could you somehow change it so there would be all the same function? Oh, yes, you can. John, would you read me H? All right, excellent. My first advice for you is to get them all to be the same function. So it either all has to be secant or all has to be cosine. And generally, do you remember the rule? If we can make everything the sines and cosines, you're better off. So same deal. Don't. There's no rule as far as I know. It's like, make everything into a secant, and it'll all be better. No. But there is something about sines and cosines. So I'm going to change the secant into a 1 over cosine. That might ring a bell. Because if you've got something like this, you've got a quadratic situation developing. Even though you don't have something squared yet, you will have something squared. Because remember how you get rid of a fraction issue? You'd multiply the whole thing by the denominator. What's the denominator? So you're going to have to multiply everything by cosine theta. Times cosine theta. And times cosine theta. And then this will cancel this, and that just becomes 1 minus this will multiply by that, and I'll get 4 cosine squared theta. And then cosine times 0, what's that equal to? Zero. And look at that. That is a quadratic. It's just not done yet. I gotta usually have the squared part first. So minus 4 cosine squared theta uh, plus 1. And then, isn't it true I can multiply both sides by negative 1? Whenever you've got a negative in the front, it's not very nice to factor that. So multiply everything by negative 1. Multiply negative 1 here, multiply by negative 1 here, and multiply by negative 1 there, and you will get 4 cosine squared theta minus 1 is equal to 0. And then 
Isn't that a difference of squares? Yes, it is. So it'll factor just like I showed you yesterday. So you have to get like halfway through a really long problem even to get to where it's like the problem we had yesterday. So yeah, these are a lot harder. And then it's still not done. When you get to the very end, you got to know what is the number of degrees that makes it work. So yeah, these are hard. You're in a hard math class. Some of you, this is the hardest math class you'll ever have because you'll because you'll stop taking math at this point and not take calculus next year. If you take calc, it'll be harder than this course. Unless you take the calc, this is, for some of you, this is the end of the road. This is your hardest one you'll ever have. I have heard that, I think you meant that calc, do it, do I say that again? Gotcha. And I have heard people say, some people say that, uh, the, the other way to say that is pre-calc is harder than calc, but I think you have to admit that calc concepts are a little higher level than pre-calc concepts. As far as the class goes, I hear you, this is a hard class, but you can't complain too much. I mean, hey, the average grade in here, if you look at the class average, is like a B plus. It's not that bad, okay? It's hard stuff, but as much as many of you loathe Marzano, I think it's saving a lot of your grades. Those, those grades aren't that bad. You get three out of four, and you're getting A's. A lot of A's. So I know as much as many of you are like, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I think it's the reason your grades are higher. But 